Hello, Joy friends, and welcome to Once Upon a Storybook. My name is Cynthia with Cynthia's Joyful Creations, and today we are going to look at another true angel story from the book In the Arms of Angels by Joan Wester Anderson. And today's story is titled Angels at the Door. Who can know what tales are told in the whispers of an angel? Who can see what mighty deeds he does in the name of the Lord? This phrase was from Dennis Carlson Ragsdale. Kay and Johnny Woodhouse were winding up an August weekend with their daughter, son-in-law, and grandchildren at their summer cottage outside Marion, Iowa. It had been an enjoyable but unusually stressful weekend, Kay realized as she packed their belongings. Johnny had seemed a bit impatient, and that morning he had complained of being winded on a simple walk. Now that she thought about it, he had recently had trouble riding a bike up a hill on one of their outings. You're out of shape, Kay had kidded him. But now she wondered. For the past few months, she and Johnny had been clearing timber here for their dream house to be built near the cottage. The work was strenuous, but Johnny had never seen worn out. And today they planned to play golf after lunch with some friends and he hadn't suggested that they cancel the date. Kay tossed her stuff in the car, kissed her grandkids goodbye and decided not to worry. The Woodhouses returned home to Marion just before noon. They were carrying in their gear when the doorbell rang. Kay opened it to two women. They were dressed casually and carried clipboards. Kay assumed they were selling something. I'm sorry, she began. I don't have time to speak with you today. We're on a tight schedule. We're taking a survey in your neighborhood, the older one declared. It's in regards to how the flood of 93 affected people here. The Mississippi River had overflowed its banks in 1993, damaging many cities. The flood of 93, Kay was baffled. No one had ever asked her about it. Why would anyone want to know now? This won't take long, the woman bustled in, somehow taking charge and set her briefcase on the couch. We're taking blood pressure readings too, she explained, whipping out a pressure cuff and looking expectantly at Kay. Well, it wouldn't hurt to have her blood pressure taken. Bemused, Kay sat down and began to explain that the flood of 93 had presented no real hardship for them. The second woman was busy writing in her notebook when Johnny passed the door, carrying a small television set. He's the one who ought to have his pressure checked, Kay said, only half in jest. Johnny had seemed very uptight on the way home. No way, he answered. We're going to be late for golf as it is. Won't take but a moment, the older woman said, booking no opposition. She led Johnny to the couch, and surprisingly, he didn't resist. No one spoke for a moment, and then the woman snapped off the cuff. You should go down to the hospital and have this checked again, she announced firmly. I'm fine, Johnny protested. Come on, Kay, we need to grab some lunch and leave. Both women stood up. If he were my husband, the older woman said to Kay, we would be on our way to the hospital right now. She and her helper sailed briskly out the front door, closing it behind them. Kay was astonished. Wait, she opened the door again, full of questions. How could they tell her something like that and simply leave? But there were no women on the front walk or moving down the street. No women anywhere. How had they disappeared so quickly? Look, Johnny said, lifting his golf bag from the closet. If it would make you feel better, we can stop at a care center on the way home from golf. Let's go. Kay knew better than to argue. She nodded. But there would be no golf match today. As Johnny walked to the starter's desk at the course, he suddenly changed plans, beckoning to their friends. I had my blood pressure taken about an hour ago, he explained casually, and the woman suggested I go to the hospital. So Kay and I are going to skip golf and get it checked out. This was news to Kay, and of course, her independent husband refused to let her drive. She could do nothing but pray for her husband's health and for safety from potential traffic accidents. By the time they reached the hospital parking lot, even stubborn Johnny admitted he was having pain. Kay was sent to the desk to register him, and by the time she got to the examining room, Johnny was hooked up to the machines with several doctors and nurses surrounding him. Your husband is having a heart attack, one of them told Kay. Fortunately, he came here in time. If it had been up to him, Kay wanted to say. Instead, she prayed again, this time for the two women and the perfect timing they had that had convinced Johnny he needed help. The next day, Johnny underwent 
a quadruple bypass and their four grown children were all there to pray with and support their mom and dad. That was a miracle that they all got here so fast, Kay says today. The second miracle was that Johnny had no permanent heart damage. The doctor said that if he had played golf that day, he probably would have had a massive coronary on the course. Kay thanks the family, thinks the family experienced a third miracle too. I checked with my neighbors to see if any of them had been visited at noon on Monday by two women conducting a very odd survey about the flood of 93 and taking blood pressures at the same time, Kay says. No one knew what I was talking about. Kay and Johnny did get their dream house designed and built and they moved into it in 1996. We burned wood for our heat and cut and stacked the wood in the spring, Kay says. Johnny made a dining room table and a set of bunk beds out of a huge oak that we had cut down. We know that we could not have done any of these things without God's hand to guide us along the way. God's hand and some of his very efficient helpers. I hope you enjoyed that angel story, Angels at the Door. Thank you for joining me for Once Upon a Storybook. And I look forward to another angel story next week. See you then. Be joyful, everyone. Bye.